When you're first taught how to throw the lead hook, you're taught to pivot on the ball of your front foot. And that's mainly just to get the motion, the rotation in your hips to throw that lead hook properly. However, when you do this, you lose a lot of stability in this front leg due to it caving in. And it's easy to come off balance when you're actually sparring or in a real fight. So you might have heard other coaches say to keep this foot planted as you throw it. So you see my front foot here, it's planted when I throw it compared to pivoting like this. From watching some of my fights back, I noticed that I either pivot on my front foot or I keep it planted. But this is entirely dependent on the situation in the fight at the time. In this video, I'm gonna break down the different situations where you would use each variation. And then I'm gonna go into the technique of both variations to make you a more effective boxer. Okay, now I'm gonna explain the planted variation of the lead hook, where you're not pivoting on the ball of your front foot. You're just keeping it nice and solid in the ground and just using this rotation of your hips to generate the power. I'm gonna break down the technique the situation, there's only real, really one situation where, I, where you use this and it's probably the most common situation and any mistakes you might make whilst throwing this variation. The situation where you should use this technique for the lead hook is when you're throwing combinations and in particular, when, well, especially when you're on the front foot. Now I talked about when you're on the back foot, you're sort of landing that punch as they come forward like this. Now, when I wanna say on the front foot, I'm sure most of you probably already know, but for the ones that don't, that doesn't mean that you keep your weight on the front foot. It doesn't mean that you're like this. This doesn't mean you're on the front foot. What being on the front foot means is you keep proper weight distribution, 60% of the weight on your back foot, 40% on the front, and you're the one advancing and pressuring against your opponent as opposed to being the one that's like dancing around the ring and trying to catch them as they come in. So... You want to keep your lead foot planted in the ground nice and solid when you're throwing combinations. For example, a one, two, left hook, backhand, because it keeps you on balance during those combinations. All right, it keeps you on balance before and after throwing the lead hook. For example, if I threw a lead hook and I pivoted, I've got to come back from this position here where my hips are over rotated, if you will, all the way back to here to be able to throw my right hand whereas if I keep it planted then I, all I have to do is go from here to here and I'm already in the perfect position to let that right hand go as opposed to being all the way back here see the distance it has to travel as opposed to throwing it from here as opposed to throwing it from there it's a lot closer to the target and it's not going to make any difference in power if I throw my right hand from back here all it's going to do is be less likely to land so when I'm throwing combinations, I want to keep this lead foot planted. Now, what does keeping your lead foot planted actually mean? Keeping it planted means that you're gripping the ground with your feet. Now, it's very easy to just keep your foot still like this, but really planting your foot means that your lead knee doesn't really move much. If you're throwing a lead hook, say to the body, or you're throwing a lead uppercut and you see your knee bending in like this that means you've now rolled onto the front of or onto the side of your lead foot and you've taken away all that stability whereas a planted foot looks like this right my lead knee isn't really moving at all and i'm gripping the ground with my foot as opposed to throwing lead hooks where my knee's dipping in like this you're much better off just rotating on the ball of your foot if you're going to do that so think about when you're doing whether you're on the pads or on the bags or just practicing technique in general, keeping that lead knee solid during those combinations and just using the rotation from here to here and back again to generate the power for those lead hooks. So I go to this position to get the leverage to throw my lead hook and I don't over-rotate past here. If I over-rotate, that's where my knee's going to cave in and really lose that stability. There's a lot more momentum and weight that can be transferred into your punch when you keep this lead leg nice and stable. If you're pulling it across like this, the stability isn't there. A common mistake you might encounter when you're throwing the lead hook with your foot planted is just throwing arm punches like this. Right, you can see that I'm moving about my shoulder joint 
That's not what we're going to do. There's no power and weight. There's no body weight behind these punches, right? It's just the weight of my arm behind that punch. Whereas if I rotate before I throw it, then I just bring it up into position and just rotate my body back this way. That punch now has all my body weight behind it, right? It has a lot more momentum and a lot more force. So it's going to be much harder to stop. So a common mistake, as I said, is just throwing with your arm. Make sure you rotate to here before you throw that punch, as opposed to just going from this position here and just going like that. The only way you're going to throw a punch from this position is if you pivot on that front foot, like we talked about at the start, and over-rotate to this position here. So just think about that when you're keeping your lead foot planted when you're throwing the lead hook. Let's cover the pivot variation. I'm going to break down the technique when it's used and mistakes you need to watch out for when you're learning this variation. So for this variation, there are four different situations that I can think of where I would use it in a fight personally. So the first one is when your opponent's attacking, coming onto you, and you need to walk them onto a punch. Now I find what you can do is you can drop your weight onto the back heel as you pivot your front foot. So it looks like this. See how I just changed from heel to toe, toe to heel, like that. I'm sort of dropping my weight back. And we want to sort of imagine the analogy of being a hammer thrower, right? So let's say I've got the hammer here and I'm swinging it around. Hammer throwers, they're like pulling the hammer away from where it's pivoting, right? And that means that the hammer will move faster. It's the same with your fist. If I pull my weight back like this, then my fist is going to move pretty quick. The other reason why you want to bring your weight back is because you're bringing your head out of range like this. So that's why I say when someone's coming forward, especially with straight shots and their chin in the air, you want to drop back, drop that back heel, plant all the weight in your back foot and swing that lead hand round. Right? The more relaxation you have in this punch, the quicker it will come round. The better you can drop your weight back, the quicker it will come round and the more damage it will do, right? You basically just want to be swinging your arm like this, like that, as they come in, right? So that's the first situation where I would use the pivot on my front foot variation of the lead hook. The second situation where I'd use this variation of a lead hook where I'm pivoting on the front leg would be, again, when someone's coming on to me, but I'm going to use a check hook, right? Now a check hook, we generally pivot off to get out of the way of their punches. So if I pivot this way, then I'm going to be facing them whilst they're facing that way and they're going to be in a vulnerable vulnerable position for me to land my lead hook. However, I usually catch them as they're coming in like this and then I'll pivot with this lead foot which will create the angle of which I need to push off, right? So if I pivot on my lead foot to this angle, see my lead foot's facing that way, then I can push off and I'll be aligned in, at a new angle like this. Right, see I've, piv I've pivoted off in the direction that I angled my foot to. So I've pivoted there and then I'm pushing off and now I'm in, in this position, all right? Let's show you again. Pivot, push off, take an angle. Like that. And you can also step with it. I guess that's pivoting your foot as well. Just stepping into a pivoted position like this and then pushing off. Generally, you see like Mayweather when he knocked out Ricky Hatton, he sort of just pivoted like this and then just pushed off as he came in. So pivot and take the angle. Right, when you're doing this, you've got to make sure that you're staying on balance as you take that angle. Right? I didn't stay on balance on one of those examples, I don't think. I sort of went onto my heel. Remember, you stay on the ball of your foot, you put, pivot, push off, and now you're in this new position. 60% of my weight is on the back foot, 40% is on the front foot, and my hands are still up, still keeping my shape. The third situation where you'd use this pivot variation of the lead hook is, well, first of all, I'm going to break down sort of the biomechanics of the lead hook. So generally, if you're keeping your front foot stable, you have to rotate to here to be able to get any leverage in your lead hook. 
However, when you're pivoting on your front foot, you can pretty much throw it from this neutral position. You might want to slightly rotate this way before you come back this way. However, you can pretty much throw it from here. I'm over rotating is what I call it. This is the neutral position. This is the rotated position. Anything past here is over rotating. And that's sort of what you're doing when you pivot on this front foot. That's why it's easy, easy to lose balance. So that means that you don't need to really set up that, that rotation before you throw it, which means it's great for throwing off a jab. So if I throw a jab, my hips are still in the neutral position, but then I can just draw a little C shape with my hand and then pivot and throw that lead hook from there as opposed to going jab, like rotate my hips to this position before coming back to throw it. So I can just go there and then there. Again, thinking about that hammer throw analogy where I'm dropping my weight back and I can plant my heel if I want to as I do that. Just making sure I rotate my hips. It's there and there. The reason why this is such an effective little combo is because a jab will usually provoke a right hand. Say I'm fighting an orthodox fighter or someone of the same stance as me. If I throw a jab, a likely counter to the jab would be a slip right hand or an overhand over the top as they slip inside. So throwing the jab and then dropping my head back out the way as I throw a lead hook is going to expose that area open from them throwing a right hand, which would be over the top of that right hand. So I can throw the jab and then quickly come over as I rotate past that position. But I need to make sure that all my weight is planted in this back foot for this to be effective. Because if it's not, it's very easy for me to come off balance, especially if I miss the target, right? Because if I miss the target and I've pivoted, there's no resistance of my opponent, which I would have hit, stopping me from falling over. So if I miss him, it's much easier to fall off balance that way. So we need to make sure that our back foot's solid in the ground and planted when we're doing this. Like that. Right, the fourth situation where I'd use this pivoting on my lead foot variation of the lead hook is when I know I've got a target lined up. I know I'm gonna land a punch i.e. they're looking down, they don't want it, <laughs> they've got their hands up like this, and I know I can set it up nice and easy. I'll probably, throw, I'll probably throw it off a right hand just to measure it up, and then just swing this one around the side of their guard. In that situation, you want to generate as much power as possible, and you generate power from punching through the target, right? And that's what you're doing when you're really pivoting on this front foot. You're like following through with this lead hand like this. If you're following through on your punches, you're not stopping at the punch. Right, there's a big lesson to learn in boxing, and that's you need to get the dig into the punch as opposed to just onto it. If you throw a punch at a target and it lands and then you just bring it back as it lands, then it won't do any damage or it won't do anywhere near as much damage as if you envision yourself punching through that target. So think about when you've got a target lined up and they're not moving, you know they're still going to be there following through with that lead lead hook, right? And just punching through the target. That's going to do a lot more damage. However, as I said in the last one, if your target isn't properly lined up and you do miss, then you're going to look a bit of a tit if you've put way too much power into that and your target doesn't stop you from falling over if you just fall onto the floor after. So remember, you've got to stay on balance as you do this. Even if you think you're 100% going to land the punch, you might not. So it's always good to remain on balance and get used to throwing these punches, whether you're pivoting or keeping that front foot planted, staying on balance as you do so. Make sure you join my free school community. It's linked in the description below. There's over 3,000 people in there and they're all just uploading their footage of their boxing content for people to give feedback on. And I think that is the best way for people to learn. Join now. Okay, bye.